What's up fight fans, welcome to my channel, this is Johnny, and in today's video we're gonna be going over the statistics that nobody talks about when mentioning last weekend's title fight at 140 pounds between Pitbull Cruz and Jose Rayo Valenzuela. Last weekend brought us Riyadh season in Los Angeles, headlined by Terrence Crawford versus Israel Majumov. If you haven't checked my breakdown yet of that fight, that video is tagged in this one. Today we're gonna to be going over the title fight at 140 pounds. Pitbull Cruz put his WBA strap on the line against division newcomer and fan favorite, Rayo Valenzuela. We knew the last time we saw Pitbull was him taking the belt from Raleigh Romero to get the 140 pound strap, and the last time we saw Rayo was when he was standing on business, avenging a loss against Chris Colbert in a beautiful style knockout fashion. Now, this fight was for Pitbull Cruz's 140 pound strap, and it was also the first time we saw Rayo in this division. With only 15 pro fights, he came into this fight as a huge underdog. Pitbull Cruz had Los Angeles on his back, and everybody, boxing pundits included, writers, most people had Pitbull going into this fight being the big favorite, but that's not what Destiny wanted, and today is that story. We're gonna break down the statistics, the punch stats, the jabs, the power shots, and talk about the overall narrative on why, at the end of the fight, when we heard the judges read and knew it was not a surprise. Guys, when we look at the overall story of the statistics, Pitbull was only able to land 23% of his total punches and 27% of his power punches, while Rayo landed 33% and 41% respectively. In addition to being more accurate, Valenzuela landed 53 more punches than Cruz and 26 more power punches than Cruz. Rayo achieved double digits and landed punches in 11 of the 12 rounds, while Cruz reached double digits in five of the 12 rounds. One judge scored it for Cruz 115 to 113, while the other two judges scored it 116 to 112 for Rayo. Guys, I have to admit, when it went to the judges, I had no idea who they were gonna side with. Personally, I had Rayo winning. I thought Rayo boxed beautifully. The Southpaw came in there primed. And the questions I had going into the fight, if you would've watched my fight breakdown earlier in the week, was, was Rayo ready for the big lights? Was the move up gonna be too much? And will the crowd, the energy, the lights, the show be too much for Rayo? And all of those questions were answered in spectacular fashion. I left feeling really impressed with Rayo, and now we have a new champion at 140. Let's take a closer look, a deep dive into those punch stats. Guys, when we look at overall total jabs thrown and jabs landed, Pitbull threw 108 and only landed six at a 5% clip. Rayo threw 179 and landed 33 at an 18.5% clip. Pitbull Cruz is not gonna jab you to death. What I would have liked to see him is actually use his jab to get into the pocket, but he was throwing his hooks, left hook, right hook, right hook, left hook, and he was doing his traditional bob and weave up and down, almost a version of Mike Tyson in his prime, but he wasn't setting anything up. I saw his style against Rayo akin to an MMA fighter who is using his kicks for the takedown, but just shoots for the double leg without throwing punches behind it, and a lot of times that MMA fighter, those takedowns will get blocked. You have to set it up. With Pitbull, his hooks, he has to set them up, and I would have loved to see him make that adjustment in the rounds. We just didn't see it. It's a lot easier said than done, but Pitbull was never able to do so. Now let's take a look at those power shots. Guys, throughout the fight, Pitbull threw 413 power shots, landing 112 at a 27% clip. Rayo threw through 337, landing 138 at a 41% clip. So with his overall jabs and power shots, Rayo Valenzuela was more precise and more accurate. When you look at the power numbers, I was actually impressed after the fight seeing how much Rayo threw, considering Pitbull was pressuring him on his back foot the entire time, and usually when that's the case, the fighter who's retreating and trying to counter is gonna have a substantial amount less of power shots, but not Rayo Valenzuela. We know he has power, we just didn't know if it would carry up to 140. He fought really smart, Every time he would see Pitbull go up and down, bob and weave to set those hooks up, we saw Rayo circle out. It was a beautiful game plan executed by Team Garcia, and I loved watching the young fighter execute it. Now let's look at the total punches for the fight. Guys, Pitbull throws 521, landing 118 at a 23% clip. Rayo throws 516, landing 171 at a 33% clip. Cruz lands 63 body shots, Rayo lands 37 body shots, but overall, out 
output was almost the same, it's just Valenzuela once again was the more precise puncher. And if you were watching our live stream, it's something that I was talking about. Pitbull Cruz at this stage in the game, I haven't seen him add anything to his skill set. He looked pretty one dimensional. And if I had to psychoanalyze his fight camp, and this has nothing to do with Pitbull, we do have to remember in his favor, he did come in as the champion. And what do we always say? If it's not broke, don't fix it. But against Valenzuela, you could see in Pitbull's style, he was banking on knocking Valenzuela out. And the brilliance of Valenzuela's game plan came in his fight prep, because you saw him, every time he would stand in exchange and get his three-piece combo off, and Cruz would load up, he, Cruz would have a tell in terms of when he was gonna get going. The whole crowd could see it, and that's when Valenzuela wasn't there to get hit. He started circling out. And you could see it's boxing 101. Garcia tells Rayo, circle away from Pipple's power side, and every single time you saw Valenzuela do that. A couple times late in the fight in the 11th round, Valenzuela's feet did get stuck in the mud, and he did get caught a couple times. But going into the 12th round, as that round finished, I was comfortable hearing and knew. And when those judges' scorecards were read, they agreed with me. Let me know what you think of the overall fight. There's a lot of questions to be asked. I'm gonna do a follow-up video on this one about who each guy should fight next, where they're going in their career. We have to remember, it's only a loss for Pitbull. He's still so young. In Valenzuela, the whole world has opened up to him because now he puts himself right next to Pueyo. Liam Pero and Teofimo Lopez as champions and kingpins at 140 pounds.